So the past couple weeks on this channel, we've had a lot of questions about finding a good deal on a used bike, good bikes around $2,000, and kind of what you want to look for to get into a bike to start mountain biking. So I'm going to show you guys three different used bike listings today, and I'll show you kind of some red flags that I found and some things that I look for as bonuses. And hopefully I'll give you guys a better idea of how I value a bike and uh, what I look for to make sure it's a good investment versus something that's going to be a headache. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today we're using Craigslist and we'll also do a little bit of pink bike, but hopefully these tips you can apply anywhere and find yourself a really nice used bike. Okay, so we're here on Craigslist and today we're going to be looking for a size medium, 27.5, entry level um, full suspension, like entry to mid level full suspension. So on the left, I'm going to go through, I'm going to click my filter for 27.5. I'm going to put 2,500 as our min, or as our max. I'm going to put a thousand as our min. So we sort out some of like the smaller bikes. And then right up here, I'm just going to go up and type medium. So that brings up uh, these bikes right here. So right away, we have these three, which are full suspensions, kind of entry level. And this is like perfect under my price range. This looks awesome. So let's go ahead and look through these first. So right off the bat, when I get into a listing, the first thing I'm going to look at is, um, is the bike clean? If they took the time to clean the bike, that's a good sign from a, a seller. Another thing I look at right away is are the tires matching? A lot of times if you have matching tires, that's either a sign of attention to detail or it's a sign that the bike wasn't ridden a ton. It still has the stock tires on it. Another thing that I look at immediately is how much wear is on the crank arm here. So when you pedal, your shoe's gonna rub on the crank arm and create wear. So you'll be able to see that obviously. And it looks like this one is in great shape. So it doesn't really have much wear on it. That's a good sign that the bike hasn't been ridden a ton. So that's a huge bonus right away. And this is one I wanna to talk to you guys about. So when I'm looking at a drivetrain, the first thing I look at is if there's any sign of impact or damage in this little area on this knuckle. Um, usually if you have major signs of impact, like this one's not bad. There's just a little bit here, but if you had like some big gouges or anything, that's a sign that this derailleur hanger is going to probably be bent, probably going to have some extra wear on the pulley wheels from it being off angle. And also, um, it's just going to be kind of a headache. So you might have a bent derailleur, you might have a bent hanger. And overall, that's just something I look for right away to know if you're going to need to bring it into a shop. Um, so this one has a little bit of wear, like maybe they rode past and scuffed a stump or something, but it's not bad. Like they didn't smash it into a big rock or anything. Another thing that I'll look at is the fork. Um, right here, it looks like it hasn't taken any impact. So that's a huge bonus. And overall, this bike looks like it's in great shape. So this is definitely uh, one that we're going to, you know, put a star on. Going into this next listing, uh, this one right off the bat has a few concerns for me. Uh, on the brake rotors, there's a little bit of discoloration, which means that these brake rotors have been heated up a lot so that the bike's been ridden pretty hard um, or that it's been doing some big long descents, especially when you see like a four piston caliper and you have all this discoloration. That means whoever was riding it was, was riding it pretty hard. I like to look for a rotor that has like pretty unison color and just looks like it hasn't been beat because you want to find a bike that has the least amount of abuse on it. Going through here again, you can see some discoloration. It also looks like part of it could be the light, but it looks to me like there's a lot of brake pad uh, residue on the rotor right there. So that's a sign. And then also uh, right on the fork, there's a little bit of damage, but that's not too bad. It's nothing to be concerned about really. But yeah, that brake rotor just tells me that this bike has been ridden hard. So going up here again, there's some scratches up here, scratches there, scratches on the stem. And it just looks like maybe the bike's been flipped over a bunch of times to be worked on. So again, another little bit of a telltale sign versus on that Kona. It looked like everything was pretty much brand new. So definitely has a little bit more wear there than I would like to see. And another thing right away, there's that damage that we were looking for on the Kona. Um, so that thing looks like it has been thrashed and probably the reason that the bike's been flipped over a bunch of times and you have the scratches on the brake levers is because they were out on rides and this wasn't shifting correctly. So that's a big sign for me right away. So overall, you know, that just means that I need to investigate a little bit further. So I'm going to read through this a little bit and it looks like it's purchased for his wife. Everything looks good. And then right here, boom, rear suspension needs a service. It loses pressure over the duration of the ride. So right away, you know that if you get into this bike, you're going to have to deal with the rear shock service, which could be a hundred dollars or more, depending on what shop you're going through. And that's just going to be a pain in the butt. Plus you have all those other little red flags. So I'm going to say this is a no go. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that one. And then third, here we have a uh, kind of a, you know, quintessential case of someone buying a bike, riding it one time and then 
you know, want to sell it. So it looks like they bought it brand new for 2,300 bucks. Um, they're selling it for 1675. So it is like a decent deal. Um, but one thing I want to show you guys is because this is a bike from REI, it's a ghost brand right away. I'm going to look at this and see this quick release lever on the back going down. That's an immediate red flag that maybe it wasn't assembled completely properly. Um, it should be kind of in line with the frame or up. You never really want it down because you can hit it on a rock and it'll unspin. Uh, another thing is that the brake cable right here is actually on the outside of the fork. That's another sign that it wasn't assembled properly. So that's two red flags right away that I'm going to look at. And so I know that if I do buy this bike, even if I like it, um, I need it to go into a bike shop right away, like a real bike shop and have it looked at so that I can make sure that it's assembled properly so I can ride it. The reflectors on there and everything to show, you know, it's brand new, matching tires, everything looks good on it, but I can tell that whoever put it together isn't maybe a trained bike mechanic. And so that's a red flag for me right away, just cause that could be dangerous. So yeah, technical service at REI. Um, so yeah, other than that, the bike looks like it's in good shape. There's that brake cable on the outside. This should always be on the inside so that if you um, crash into a rock or something, it doesn't cut your front brake line. So that's one thing. But this is a good example of a rotor that doesn't have any discoloration. So this rotor's all one color. Um, it has a little bit of brake residue on it, but that's totally normal. But overall, this looks like it hasn't been abused at all. There's no damage on the fork. Like, looks like a great bike. Um, but yeah, I would just know right away that I had to take it into a bike shop. And you can see maybe right here, uh, they didn't know what they were doing when they were turning the lockout knob and they either smashed it into the fork or they tried to take it off and use a crescent wrench to deal with something and scratch the fork. So again, just wasn't serviced properly. So now that we did those three, um, you know, I think this is the winner by far. It's 2000 bucks. It's in our price range. The bike looks really nice. They took the time to fill out all of these different forms on the side, which is another good sign. And, you know, like I said, the retail is 3,500 bucks. They're selling it for 2000 bucks. So you could realistically ride this for a full year, get a ton of fun out of it. Um, you know, clean it up really nice, take care of it and then sell it for what you bought it for. So your out of pocket expense would just be like the running cost. And that's what I always look for is how much is this really going to cost me if I buy it for four grand, and I ride it, you know, for a year and I sell it for two, then it costs me 2000 bucks. But if I buy it for two, I ride it for a year and I sell it for two, then your only cost is the upkeep and maintenance. So that's a really good deal. The one other thing I'll show you guys is the pink bike classified page. This is the other, um, website that I would use a lot for looking at used bikes if you don't mind paying for shipping. So I would just go in here and look at uh, complete bikes. So you can sort everything on here uh, by price, by region, you know, the wheel size, everything just like Craigslist. The only thing is you're probably going to have to ship it unless you find something local. But this is a great resource for mountain bikes. And this is where I got my first used bike. So definitely recommend using this. But just keep all those notes in mind. You want to find something like this bike where it's kind of a hidden gem. Um, you know, 3500 bucks, 2000 is the sale price. Uh, you're going to be able to ride it for a year, get your money out of it. Kind of, this is the perfect example. And I was stoked to find this on the website today. I was like, I need to do a video on this. All right, guys. So I hope this was a helpful video for you. Like I said, I always try to think about bikes as an investment. You know, mountain bikes are expensive, but if you think about it the right way and you plan the right way, you can really make it affordable and doable. And that's what this channel is all about is kind of helping you guys get the tools, knowledge, and skills to make mountain biking your passion and fall in love with it. Just like myself and April did. So Thank you guys for watching. If you could like and subscribe, that'd be awesome. And I will see you guys on the next one.